Okay, so you made it. This is part number three of uh, this training on how to pre-sell lead gens for three to 5,000. So part of my process, what I do is I use social media ads to bridge the gap. So essentially, there's two ways you could do it. Uh, way number one is uh, you bundle in the actual lead gen with the sale initially. Way number two is you upsell it. So once you got the social media ads running for them, you then jump on Zoom and you then you upsell the lead gen or um, you don't even tell them about it, build it out and then say, hey, this is what I did for you as part of the service, right? Because it's uh, like with the way I do it, it's a multi-channel approach. So with that said, in this video, I just want to walk you through um, how do you actually run social media ads? Uh, I'm not going to do a whole big intro. So let's uh, just take it away to the video. Send out cold emails. I showed you the responses how that worked, they should do the exact email. Then what we did is we played the, the sales call of converting that client into a $3,000 a month uh, client in my business. What I'm gonna show you now is how do you deliver the service? Cause right, there's three pillars to every business. There's leads, there's sales, and there's service. These are, these are the things that you really gotta focus on. And you know, if you're, you're not making the money that you want, your focus has to be number one, how do we get appointments on the books, how do we close appointments, appointments, in the books, and then what are the systems to actually deliver that service and scale your business. So this is my process that I've developed for running social media ads. So Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and it's seven steps. There's number one, you got evaluation and goal setting. Uh, number two, that's, you know, so number one is evaluation and goal setting. That's figuring out what is the client's goals and kind of taking uh, intaking and figuring out, you know, where they're at, where they want to go. And a lot of this is going to be done on that sales call. As you heard me do figuring out the client's goals. If it's your goals, you got to know what you're trying to achieve. Number two, then is the market research blueprint. And this is looking at the, cause you never market in a vacuum, right? There's always going to be competition. So this is going out, seeing what other people are doing in the market, seeing what things are doing, correct, seeing what things are doing wrong. And also figuring out, there, whether it's your business, it's figuring out who's your ideal customer. If it's their business, figuring out, figuring out kind of who is the person that we're marketing to, right? In the, in the case of Neograft, it's men over 30 that are losing their hair that want this procedure to have a fuller set of hair. After that, we go to step three, which is hitting the marketing bullseye, right? The marketing bullseye is getting that message to market match right and also having that positioning. So we're gonna cover that. After that, once you have your messaging done, you've done a lot of the groundwork, a lot of the research, it's actually, what are, how do you create the ad, right? How do you use Instagram? How do you use Facebook? What are the buttons that you actually press to actually get your social lead machine live? That way you can set this thing up within 60 minutes. In my agency, we're actually, we still do this. We set it up in 40 minutes or less when we take on a new client. That way it's pretty scalable, right? It's not like, um, other service work where you're getting paid for the hour it's really quickly once you set this up and then it's just the managing of the campaign but essentially it's setting up your social lead machine what buttons to click i'm going to show you how to do this on an ultra budget and i'm also going to show you the tools that you could add on to kind of optimize it next after that once you have your ads running and again you could have those ads running within 24 hours generating leads for yourself or, or for your clients and that's very important you know this could be done as well for yourself so don't just think of this as a service to deliver for clients you could also run this if you have a web design business a swag business whatever business you have you could use social media ads to generate leads for yourself that way you're not out there cold prospecting and you get people on your calendar saying hey i want your help um, so that's step four. Step five is then the optimize and scale. This is how you read your numbers, which is really important. When do you kill ad? Uh, how do you scale the ad to get more leads? So I'll, I'll cover that in great detail. After that, we're gonna go over the lead nurture and conversion system, which is really, really important because if you're handling these leads yourself, you're gonna wanna know the best procedures on how to handle them. Uh, if you heard my phone call from last week, Essentially, I was doing some of the lead nurturing coaching on that actual phone call. Uh, but you really want, if it's your business, you wanna know how to handle the leads because no point in generating leads if you don't know how to convert them. If it's their business, it's important for two reasons. Number one, you wanna be able to manage expectations. And number two, um, you wanna have give them the greatest chance of success with the leads that you're gonna give them. And one of the biggest mistakes I see in almost every one of these 
Um, and there's hundreds of them, right? And, and some are good, some are bad. But the uh, Facebook ads training courses on how to start your agency, there are not many of them that cover the lead conversion part and the lead nurture part, which is essential and really the key if you want to have your client sticking month after month, right? If you want that three thousand um, dollar commit check coming in, three thousand dollar credit card payment every single month from your client. And last is um, turning your skill into a business. So with that said, um, this system is a combination of me doing Facebook ads and so and social media ads for five years. Um, spending over $2.5 million of my own money and counting and basically going out, networking, <laughs> spending money on seminars and becoming friends with some of the top marketers in the world. So people like Jason Hornig, Billy Jean, um, Joe Polish. So these are people that, you know, that I could literally call or text and they'll get back to me. So I've had access to some of the best Facebook ads experts in the world as well as going out there uh, pretty much picking up every course on this material and then spending my own money. So this is really what this the combination of this system is. And again, it's these seven steps. So with that said, we're going to get right into it. So evaluation and goal setting. So that's really the first step. And really, it, you cannot help your client until you clearly understand their objectives, choose a call to action, and define success and what that looks like for them. So really the, the, the stuff that I look for before I actually ever even write, write an ad or do anything is I want to know what's the goal, what is the niche that we're going to go after, what is their margin, what is their offer, and what is the competition doing. So with the example of Neograph, you could see I got that goal on the phone. He wanted to make, I think it was an extra four Neograph patients per clinic and he said his average client was $9,000. So I knew the niche. We knew the goal. Um, he covered his margin, which I think he said was 35%. And then obviously the offer was something that I went and figured out in the market, uh, market research phase, which is I saw what other people were running for Neograft, other hair restoration ads. And I made my own offer out of that, which was a free consultation plus fifteen hundred dollars off Neograph. So that's really what you want to know before you run it, and I'll and I'll show you how you go about figuring that out. So um, obviously, the easiest way to figure this stuff out is through the initial sales conversations that you have with them. So in my audit call, these are the questions that I'm asking. Also on that second call, these are the questions that I'm asking. I also, right before we start everyone's ad, we do an onboarding card call. So any of these uh, questions I haven't asked them, I'll ask them. So what's their current process for making sales? So whatever the niche is, where do they currently get leads from? What have they tried in the past? Because a lot of times um, they might have done stuff in the past that has worked really well for them. For example, uh, I'm not going to give away the niche, but we had a client that uh, we, we were having trouble figuring out the offer for him. And he had mentioned that he had ran a TV ad, very successful. And then the problem was uh, less and less people went on TV, but we actually were able to take that same exact offer from TV, plop it on. We actually used the the real um, TV commercial that he made, and we made we turned that into a Facebook and Instagram ad, and that worked like gangbusters. So you want to ask them, what have you tried in the past? Uh, do you have marketing systems for generating leads? Do you know where your best clients come from? Do you have trackable marketing systems in place? Do you know how many contacts it takes your company to convert a prospect into a client? What is your current close rate? These are all things you want to know. Um, if it's yourself that you're running ads for, again, you want to figure out what's your process. Where do you currently get, get leads from? So whether it's yourself as a client or a client you're taking on, those are the things you want to know. The most important thing you want to know is what can they afford to spend to acquire a customer? And this is something I always try to get in every sales conversation is what's their lifetime value? What's the average first time client value? In the Neograph, it was $9,000. And then it's really what is their margin? Uh, that way we can know how much can we afford to buy a customer? Because that's ultimately the system we're trying to set in. We're trying to set in essentially a vending machine where, hey, you put in $100 and a client comes out, right? Or a slot machine that, and these are analogies that I'll use, you know, if you could put a dollar into a slot machine and $2 come out, how many times would you play on that slot machine? And that's essentially the system we're trying to build. And what's great about uh, social media ads and 
this type of stuff is you can really get down to where you have that consistent and predictability to where you know for every two dollars you put in you got four dollars coming back out or for every two dollars you got 10 coming out and again this is, comes down to knowing their margin so you want to find out the way to find out their margin is what is their revenue margin equals revenue minus operating cost divided by revenue so you want to figure this out and this really tells you hey how much can uh, we spend to acquire a customer and break even sometimes you might have to uh, like for example in the dental niche you might have to uh, figure out their value ladder which is a concept of, of essentially having a loss leader whether it's free teeth uh, free teeth whitening might be the essentially the the way to get them in the door and then you have built in the number of upsells such as like retainers or custom teeth whitening kits or uh, a crown right so that way we're trying to figure out uh, what is that lifetime value of a client so like I said we, we want to figure out what is our goal uh, why and then we want to reverse engineer it so that is really step one is to intake essentially what we're looking uh, to figure out for the client or if it's yourself you're trying to figure out what's your goal why and reverse engineer and a lot of this if it's yourself it's, it's get taking a pad of paper figuring out what you know what is your uh, revenue goal how many Facebook leads do you or social media leads do you need to get that and if it's your client again this is stuff you're gonna pull out of them usually it's gonna happen in that audit call or that second call which again you you, you could hear me figure out hey you know what's what would be the impact of this on your business if we got you to thirty five thousand dollars a month in revenue so that's step one and uh, we'll go into step two in a all right so step one Mike just obviously to kind of give it a, a quick little recap so people can follow along that might just have joined us um anything you want to recap or any notes that people should be jotting down to stay with what we're doing here yeah so so step one it's key to have those intake questions um a lot of people are saying that they were loving those intake questions and those are really like you have to have those in your head whether it's your business or their business to actually know where to go right there's no point like i and your greatest dan it's figuring out all right what is the goal what's that number and then it's backwards engineering. So many people in business won't take the time to do third grade math and figure out what are the numbers, right? What's their margin? What can we afford to buy a customer? Uh, to buy a customer? And that's really the, the key to that first session is figuring out their goal, figuring out their sales process and gathering that, that data. And we're gonna continue to gather more of that data right now in the second, sep in, in the second session. So, um, that's basically it. So um, roll video two, unless you got anything to add there, uh, Mr. MC. Cool, so I'll keep recapping then, because I think, I think we lost Daniel. I'm not sure if we did. So I'm getting uh, good feedback, really great process. Uh, recap, please. All right, cool. So I don't know if we lost Dan or not. You lost me for a second there. Let me uh, let me get you back on pace here. If not, what I'll do is I'll just jump into it here. Hang on, buddy. Mike. All right. Yep. There you go. I got kicked out, so I kicked out all my videos with it. So let me just <laughs> put this one on there for you for next here. Uh, hang tight. Emma says, really great process. Uh, recap, please. Uh, this is great content. Mike yeah. Marin ain't no joke. Thank you. Uh, Lori, such important parts of the numbers with the with the ads. Let me see if I could do this here. So, I got it. It's, okay. almost, it's almost uploaded, dude. Just had to, that's why I wanted it all in one thing, but whatever. Got it. Oh, okay. good. My mistake, guys. So I will uh, do my best to over deliver. So now we're gonna cover the market yeah. research blueprint. So this is the process that I go through. And uh, essentially, this is my ad campaign planning process. So step number one, what I do is I always want to review at least the top three competitors, website and fan pages. So if this is you, you obviously, you're going to know who your competitors are. If it's your client, you can ask them. But a lot of times, if it's a local business, it's going to be clients in their local area. Uh, what I'll also like to do is I like to look at you know, the bigger markets, right? Like New York, Boston, Chicago, um, 
LA and if it's a local client, look at the top uh, businesses in those markets, the ones that have the top rankings, the ones that look most active with their social media profiles. The other thing you could do is you could use a program like Sales Genie or Info USA, and then you could see you know what companies have the highest revenue in the country for the market that you're going into. And um, you could steal a lot of good stuff by seeing who the top marketers are. One thing that I did in uh, the one of the niches that I'm in, uh, it's actually the, the med spa niche, is essentially I was able to find one of the top med spas in the country. They were located out in New Jersey. And a lot of the offers that I first came up with was basically piggybacking off of their great marketing. So, you know, a lot of this work is done for you, but really what you're going to look for is I like to uh, create a pre-copy sheet. And what this means is before I write any advertisements, I like to see, you know, what are the facts that the my competitors are saying? What are the benefits that they're offering? What are the actual offers, right? Is it a free consultation? Is it buy one, get one free? And then lastly, what's the proof? Is it before and afters? Because essentially, we want to match and improve what they're doing. Also, what we want to do is we want to look for their unique selling propositions. Um, you know, we want to see how they're answering the question. If, if I am your ideal prospect, why should I do business with you versus any other options, including doing nothing. So a lot of times, you know, local businesses won't have one, uh, but sometimes they do. And, uh, you know, if they don't have one, you still want to see what are the benefits they're offering. That way you could position against what they're doing and be different. Really key. Um, you also want to look at, you know, um, when we're looking at their advertisements, when we're looking at their Google AdWords, when we're looking at their website, what problems are they calling out? What frustrations are they calling out? What fears? And then what are the desires, hopes, and dreams that they're saying that they're going to be able to accomplish? And really, we're looking to reverse engineer, right? Um, and I'll show you how to do this in a second. Um, and then um, that's kind of step one. Step two is I always, always like to answer the smart market diagnosis questions. And this, this is something I learned from Dan Kennedy. Uh, it's from one of my top recommended books on copywriting, which is the ultimate sales letter. And um, that is, I'm going to go to it here, these 10 questions, which is number one, what keeps them, this is whether if it's your business, these are your prospects, if it's the pro if prospects business, who are their prospects, customers, right? We want to know what keeps them up awake at night, indigestion, boiling up their esophagus, eyes open, staring at the ceiling. We want to know what are they afraid of? What are they angry about? Who are, who are they angry at? What are their top three daily frustrations? What trends are occurring and will occur in their business or lives? What do they secret or ardently desire the most? Uh, is there a built-in bias to the way that they're making decisions? Do they have their own language? Who else is selling something similar to them and how? And who else has tried selling them something similar and how has that effort failed? And these are good questions for figuring out the competitive landscape and also entering in the conversation with your prospect's head, which is ultimately what a good ad is going to do. So like I said, um, here's where I like to go to check out the competition. Number one, simplest way, go to Google. You know, type in, um, you know, New York uh, lawyer or San Diego lawyer, lawyer San Diego. Uh, immigration attorney, right? If, if that's a niche that you're going after. And then essentially it's just a matter of checking out their website. Um, you, most of the time from, the, from their website, you could find their social properties, their Twitter feed, their Instagram, their social media. And then you could start to look at, you know, what are they posting on there? What are their offers that they're making? Because a lot all these businesses are usually promoting uh, on their social media properties as well as their website. Um, you could do the site colon dash and look at try to find every page of their website. Um, I like to sometimes uh, if, I, if it's a brand new market, you know, I pop the, the website in similar web spy foo, you can look at what AdWords they're running and Alexa. That way you can start to get uh, information on the demographic if they have enough uh, of uh, traffic that way you're not guessing right. The you want to do as little guessing as possible which is you want to know, okay, the majority of their web web viewers are women ages 35 to 45 uh, from the United States and they live in bigger cities. This is all stuff that's going to help you write your ads. Um, one of the things I love to do is go into the Facebook ads library, um, which is a way to, uh, you know, when, once you have their fan page, you could type that in, and that way you could see all the active ads they're running on Facebook or Instagram. So that's really 
really key when it comes to figuring out what they're doing. And, and again, if you're finding the better competitors on a national scale, you could simply plug that over into the local business that you're working with. Another tool a bit more expensive is Power Ad Spy. Uh, you could find the YouTube ads and all sorts of uh, banner ads and all sorts of stuff like that. And um, another one is Ad Suite, I believe it's called. Um, so that's kind of my process. Um, Groupon and Living Social is another place that I will look because a lot of times if you have you can see an offer that's successfully running on uh, Groupon or Living Social, you can take that and you could turn that into a Facebook ad, a social media ad. Um, and then finally, um, there's some advanced Google searches. Uh, if you guys have checked out my Google hacking, which is in the, the cheat codes program, I cover this in, in more detail, which is uh, typing in the Google with advanced search search queries like facebook.com forward slash K likes limited time gym, right? That way it's going to try to pull out some uh, gym ads. And then also uh, clickfunnels.com, leadpages.net, app, any landing page builder uh, with the name of the niche, you could sometimes find um, some really good landing pages that have been built out there by other marketers so we could start to get some ideas of how do we uh, format our stuff, you know, what are what's the advertisement copy that we're going to use and again here's the facebook library if you just go there and type in uh, facebook ad library you'll be able to get to this you're going to go over there um, you're going to select all categories and then you can either search by the um, and you can set your location as well uh, but you're either going to search by uh, the keyword or you could search by if you know your actual competitors from finding them in google and again the entire time I'm doing this, I got a, uh, a Google Doc open or a piece of paper, and I am figuring out the answer to all of these questions. Um, and again, we're going to figure them out by checking out their websites, fan pages, their ads, and all of that. So that is really step number two. And after you've done that, um, which shouldn't take you more than an hour, two hours, uh, if it's a brand new niche, um, you could do it pretty, pretty quick. But once you have that, you got everything you need to start to hit the marketing bullseye. And the marketing bullseye is when you get this right, when you get the message, market, and the media right. And these are the three trying, this is the results marketing triangle. Again, this is something that I learned from Dan Kennedy, which is you gotta get the right message to the right market via the right media. Now the right media, obviously we're gonna be using uh, social media ads in this case. So it's just a matter of getting the message to the right market. And something that I cover in my course in, in great detail on Facebook ads is the market part. If you know how to properly work with the Facebook algorithm, that's going to take care of a lot of it. So it's really about getting the messaging right, um, which is, you know, this next step. So getting the messaging right comes down to this. Number one, we get to develop our offer. So we want to know if it's your client, what are they going to sell to the market, right? Is it going to be a loss leader? Is it going to be their main service. For example, in the Neograft, we knew they were trying to sell Neograft, right? How are we going to sell it? Um, their current sales process was people came to their website, they filled in a form or they called in and then they spoke over the phone uh, with one of their reps. Michael Marin. Yep. Oh, your your sound on your your videos off. You want to just riff it? Cool. Yeah. So let me just pop this here. Ready? I'm gonna hit play, and you can keep going. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Press play if you can. I hit play. That is weird. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna share, share screen. There you go. Here. Share. Can you see my screen? I can now. Okay, perfect. So, perfect. So right now we're at that res result marketing triangle that I was talking about. So essentially, um, we're going in to develop our offer now. So that is the answer to what are you what are you going to sell them? How are you going to sell it? And then really, this is a key question, guys. You want to know what is, and this is a bit more advanced, but you want to know what is the core belief you have to instill in them in order for them to buy. So the, the the question that I like to ask is, and I like to backwards engineer this, and this works for all sales and all marketing. What would your prospect have to believe in terms of you, 
themselves and the way the world works in order for them to buy. So that might be a question you want to write down. What would what do they have to believe about you, themselves, and the way the world works in order for them to buy? And I call those my core buying beliefs. So, and the last thing is, how are you going to do this differently than your competition? So creating the offer comes down to this. At the end of the day, we want to always lead with, what is the number one thing your customer wants, right? So like I was just sharing with you, you I, I showed you how to go in Facebook ads library, their different social media pages and how to actually find out that information. Um, what is their big problem, right? That is also what's gonna get them attention. Next, what is the number one thing they want to know or have, okay? So once we once you have that figured out, then you could start to decide on your bait. And if you guys have been inside internet marketing for a while, uh, you'll know that the, the terminology is quite confusing. So like Dan said, um, this is called either a freemium, a lead magnet, a bribe. Um, really, the purpose of that, right, is to do two things. Number one, it's we're going to use that to exchange to get their information. And that is called a lead or an opt-in. And the second purpose of the bait, which I don't always do in the local level, is we're going to pre-frame the customer. And what we're going to do is essentially we want to warm up that lead and build our credibility. So those are the two purposes of our lead magnet, our bait, our freemium, whatever you want to call it. But when it goes down to the local level, there's typically, here's what I'm going to use. And again, going on Groupon, seeing what your, uh, your competitors are doing, that essentially is going to give you a good idea of what you should be doing. But uh, financial incentives, those always work. So for example, a sale, a discount, buy one, get one free, a package. And the way that you're going to do that is it's going to be, hey, enter in your name, email, and phone number and get this $500 off coupon or get this $1,500 off this service. Or uh, for Ashley's, we were doing, you know, get 50% off your first, first order of swag of these premium pens, right? Um, the other type would be a pain problem based to a consultation. Um, I use these every now and then, but this is essentially using your calling out their pain and saying, hey, does your knee really hurt? This works in the chiropractic space. Hey, I'm offering a free consultation for you to come in and see if your back pain or knee pain gets fixed. Um, the other thing you could, you could offer is a quiz to see if they qualify. So a quiz, these work really well in the mortgage space. So I've run a lot of ads in the mortgage and real estate space. So a pre-approval quiz, see what home that you would qualify for. So that's another one. And then finally, sort of the most advanced, but it works extremely well, is what I call a consumer awareness guide. And this essentially is they're opting in for a piece of educational-based marketing. So it could be 11 things you should know before you hire a carpet cleaner, okay? So looking back at this slide, you can see these are just some uh, examples from my swipe file. And you can see the first ad on the left is for a chiropractic. Uh, it says, hey, Wensville, we're doing something awesome to promote our office. We're giving away 27 vouchers for an adjustment, x-ray, consultation, and a doctor's report of finding for only $21. Click now to grab your voucher. So do you see how that's the offer? And they're, the next page, they're going to go through and enter in their email for that voucher. And then they go to the office and then only $27 for them. The uh, second offer, it would just be a free consultation. And then it, this is for a, a CrossFit gym, but this is essentially, hey, you know, try try out this beginner's class for free, right? It's just another form of an offer. So that basically is the offer. And um, I'll open it up for any questions you guys have on that. And then uh, we could queue up the next video, which is the seven steps for writing the perfect social media ad. All right, let me do that for you. So any questions that you guys have here? Um, so Lee saying, I just wrote an article about lead magnets, which is essentially what we're calling bait. Make it worth their while to trade their information. Really disappointing to get a bad offer. Exactly. Um, that is that. I think I'm a little ahead. You are, buddy, but you're good. I'm watching them, so you're good. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get going on this next step. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna get into actually writing the ad now. So 
uh, where we're at in the process, if we could get back to where the process is, we've um, done some evaluation goaling. We've uh, researched the competitors. I showed you how to do this. Uh, we've uh, I've showed you um, basically we're here now. So we're in hitting the marketing bullseye, which is writing the ad. So um, we figured out what we're going to offer, um, whether that's a free consultation, whether that's a discount, whether that's um, you know, a consumer awareness guide. And now what we're going to do is we're going to follow one of the simplest frameworks and it just flat out works. So here's the seven steps that I use every single time. Um, and this is what I'll always start with, which is number one, you're going to call out your audience. Number two is you're going to say, here is what I got, right? Number three is you're going to do, here is what this will do for you. And this is going to be your USP and benefits again, which you've figured out, um, by doing your, um, fact and benefit sheet as well as finding the competitors usb and coming up with why you're different uh step four is here is what i want you to do next which is the call to action reinstating the offer number five is we're going to create a headline stating the offer and possible scarcity um and then we're going to create a link description with a call to action uh that is optional sometimes what i'll do is i'll test without a description and with the description and then lastly not last but not least we're going to use the image that is that will get someone to scroll on facebook or instagram and stop and read and the master step of all of this is to check the Facebook ad policies for any violations. And again, this is something that you really wanna know uh, inside and out because you don't wanna get your account shut down. So you will see, um, these are some ads that I wrote. These are some ads uh, from my swipe file, which is very extensive. Um, I'm known for having a large, large swipe file of almost every ad. So uh, I don't remember who all the, everyone, like who this is from. I've tried to blur out their information, but I'm gonna show you right here. Um, here is the formula and you'll see almost every ad that is successful follows this. So this one says attention port Jefferson. We're inviting 12 first timers to try CrossFit free this Saturday at 10 AM. Sign up through this ad and also receive a compliment, complimentary fitness consultation. If you're serious about getting in shape and creating a healthy lifestyle, then sign up now. And it says, want to try CrossFit for free question mark, a nice image. Here's the headline, free, try our CrossFit beginners class this Saturday at our Port Jefferson location. Come together with like-minded individuals and work hard towards a common goal of improving your health and fitness. Sign up now. And then it has the button here, sign up. So you could see this roughly follows our formula. Call out your audience. What is the best way to get their attention? It's either by naming their location or um, by calling out the pain. So you'll see how we do this in, a, in another example here. Um, but essentially, um, that's the call out. Then we go, uh, which is very, this is one of the most simple copywriting formula. Here's what I got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what I want you to do next. So the, here's what I got is here's what I got. Um, which is the offer we're inviting 12 first time CrossFitters, tr first timers to try CrossFit for free this Saturday at 10 AM. And you can see the built in scarcity. Um, here's what this will do for you right? Uh, that's kind of implied because obviously people know what CrossFit is. A lot of times if it's a local ad, like if it's Invisalign, it's kind of implied it's going to straighten your teeth, right? Um, if it's some sort of fat loss thing, it's kind of implied. Um, so it's actually sometimes a better idea not to say anything at all. Um, that way you can get your ad through because anytime you start to get really aggressive with the claims of here's what it will do for you, you worry about uh, your ad getting disapproved. And the cost per lead is not that much lower, so um, it's just a judgment call you're gonna you're gonna need to take. But the, here's what it will do for you: it's kind of laid into this end line. If you're serious about getting in shape and creating a healthy lifestyle, right? It's kind of implied. So here's what I want you to do next, um, which is sign up through this ad and to also receive a complimentary fitness consultation. If you're serious about getting in shape and creating a healthy lifestyle, then sign up now. So essentially it's following this step four, which is telling them exactly what to do next. And it's also, it's reinstating the offer with kind of the built-in scarcity, which is up here. So you can see it follows that. Here's what I got. Here's what I want you to do next. Um, no, here's what I got. Here's what I do for you. Here's what I want you to do next. Uh, the headline again is just a repeat of the offer. So create the headline stating the offer in scarcity. The scarcity is this Saturday, again, free try our CrossFit beginners class this Saturday at our Port Jefferson location. And then again, the description is just following that. So 
And then the image here is uh, just the eye-catching image with, again, the, the logo of the local business. So let me show you another one. Attention dog owners of Depew, De right? Do you hate bathing your dog? How about that wet dog smell? So that is step one in our formula. Call out your audience. And this is done two ways, by their location and also the pain, which is, do you hate bathing your dog? Pain. How about that wet dog smell? Pain. Attention, dog owners of DP, uh, calling out exactly who the dog owners are. So that is the call out your audience. And then we're going to go, here's what I got, which is the offer that we figured out during the marketing bullseye, which is we're giving away 50 coupons for a free dog wash. Very simple. Offer stated. The, there's an amount, um, which is 50, so they know it's limited. And free dog wash, that is the incentive. That's the benefit. And then here we go into, here's what it will do for you, right? Um, let's face it, if you don't have time nor want to deal with the messy task of bathing your dog, but love your fur baby. So if you think your best friend deserves to be clean and pampered, then click through to claim your free wash now. Right. So you can see they get some benefits in there. It's going to save your time. The fact that you love your fur baby um, and that, you know, you're you want your the best for your dog. Right. It deserves to be clean and pampered. Then you'll see here. Here's what I want you to do next, which is then click through to claim your free wash now or click the download button below. It's probably the way that I would say. But as you can see, you're telling them exactly what to do. And that's really important. People need to be directed on what to do. This is again, uh, what Dan and I have been talking about, you know, being at cause or being at effect. You want to be at cause here and tell them exactly what to do. Um, the headline, free dog bath and brush for first time visitors. So you can see that's just a repeat of the actual headline. Uh, the description, um, a clean dog is a happy dog. Let us take care of that thing for free and then down. So as you can see, we're following this. Here is the NeoGraft offer, right? So um, this uh, ad crushed it. Uh, the only thing is I would not run this ad today um, because um, it did not, uh, you know, when Facebook got tougher with their restrictions, of course, um, they don't want you calling out the pain as harsh as we did. So this is, hey guys, hair loss or receding hairline got you feeling down and then a bad emoji. So again, we're calling them out with the pain. Um, this, in this example, calling out the dog, um, that's fine that way that you call it. Cause again, the way that Facebook, the face, our Facebook rep, rep explained this to me is you want to think of Facebook as like a, a coffee shop and essentially they don't want people in a negative state of mind. So if you went to the hair, uh, to your someone in the coffee shop and you're like, Hey, do you hate bathing your dog? They'd probably say, yeah, but it's not really going to emotionally affect them. If you go up to a ball guy and then you say, Hey, hair loss or receding hairline got you feeling down. They're really not going to like that. That might put them in a negative state. So, um, although this stuff works really, really well, and maybe Facebook will loosen their policies in the future, probably wouldn't do this, but I just want to show you the ad that we ran. So, Hey guys, hair loss or receding hairline got you feeling down. Well, today's your lucky day. And then it goes into, here's what I got. We just partnered with Neograft and we're, we are now New Jersey's newest provider of this revolution hair transplant treatment with at, with at 96% worth it rating on self. Here's the benefits, right? Social proof and thousands of satisfied patients. Here's what I want you to do next. Book your free consultation now to learn more about this, this incredible hair restoration solution. And for a limited time, only get a coupon code good for $2 off per graft or 500 off PRP. Hurry, these won't last. So as you can see, it still follows that same framework. Call the audience, here's what I got. Here's what it's gonna do for you. Here's what I want you to do next, right? Click the consultation and you can see the headline is a repeat of the offer. Neograph hair transplant offer, $2 off per graft, $5 off PRP, hurry, almost gone. And then we have get offer. So as you can see, again, we could go through more and more, but really once you understand this, you could start to write your own ads and um, get ads that convert right off the bat if you follow this process. So where do you get images? Lots of places to get images or videos. Uh, I like Canva, uh, Photoshop, Pixlr. Uh, you could do royalty-free image on Pixel or, or Unsplash. 
uh, Animoto makes their own video videos and biteable. So there's all where you would get these images. So for this, I think we got this off Pexel and you could very simply, uh, you know, we found a someone getting their haircut. Uh, it's relevant. You know, you want a relevant image and you want something that stands out. So that is how you go about writing your ad. So if you got any questions, uh, let me know and um, tell me what you tell me what you thought of that. Booyah. <laughs> wow. It's freaking high level stuff there, Michael T. Marin. But very simple, very simple framework. Uh, and that's what we discovered after. I mean, over a million dollars are running ads for local, like local businesses, over 2.5 million total on my account. That formula right there is very simple and it flat out works. And I've been able to train people on my staff to do it and it works. So it's a, uh, it's a great framework to have. I don't, and if anyone wants help writing the ads, um, we could, we could do little role plays or, or whatever. Perfect. Let's move on. Um, what, what, what's next? Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the actual nuts and bolts. So you should right now in the process, you have your ad written. And and obviously, you know, there, there's more to this, right? There's only so much I could train in, in an hour's uh, time period. But let's just go to the next next part. And um, this is going to be the over the shoulder of kind of the how to set up the ad correctly. And we'll go from there. All right. One second. Following along on these seven steps that we're running to create profitable social media ads for either ourselves or for our clients. Now that we have the ad written, it's very simple. Uh, we just got to go into the actual uh, Facebook platform, which also controls Instagram and create this social lead machine. So this is how you do this uh, again in under 60 minutes. You don't need a website. Uh, you can do this really cheap on, on a really, really gorilla budget. And I'll also show you some of the optional tools, which I recommend that you add to it. So uh, on the seven steps, uh, we've gone through the first three. We are now on step number four, which is create and launch your social lead machine. So here's what you need to run campaigns. Number one, you need a Facebook business profile. Number two, you're gonna need a Facebook business manager. Number three, you need an ad account, and then you need a fan page. That essentially is all you need to get up and running and generate leads. Um, there's no additional tools that you need. Obviously the tools do make it a bit easier, um, you know, a bit more convenient, such as, um, you know, if you set up like email notifications for yourself, which I'll, uh, you know, you could do through Zapier, but really the top four is what you need. Um, after that, you could set up a lead tracker, uh, like Google Sheets, which in real time, every time a lead comes in, you could send that. I recommend doing that if it's for a client. Um, you can set up call tracking through CallSling. Um, Facebook Pixel, the way that I do everything is through the Facebook lead ads. Um, and that actually gets around the new iOS 14 update. Because again, it's all on Facebook's platform, which they could track. It never goes to, off to your website on a mobile device where they would lose the tracking ability. Um, so you don't really need the Facebook Pixel, uh, which is, confuses people. And then the autoresponder for email follow-up, um, I recommend that, but again, you don't need that starting off. You could even email them manually once their details come in and then automatic text follow up. Again, that's, that's optional. Again, that's something that you could then set up after. So this is really what the social media local ads funnel looks like. You got, uh, your stuff coming in from Facebook, your instant articles, Instagram. Uh, they then see that a Facebook lead ad, which shows up in their newsfeed. They click the next step to a lead form, which you could again build inside the Facebook platform. And then from there we send them, which is optional. You could build actually um, the thank you page, use the lead form thank you page. So you never need an external website. Uh, however, you do need a privacy policy. So that's something that you could set up like on a free WordPress blog or something like that. But essentially um, you'd have a branded thank you page. Uh, you could build that inside of snaps. I know that Dan's created um, a few templates very simple thank you page where again, we're going to drive them for the phone call. So that's pretty much it. They see the ad shows up in their newsfeed. They're going to enter in their, their information, whatever details you're collecting. Uh, in this example, this is one of the solar ads that we're running for one of our clients and uh, we're collecting, you know, are they a homeowner? What's their monthly electric bill, their zip code, their full name, their email and their phone number. Um, that thing gets sent to the client in real time via, uh, you know, an email notification, uh, text message notification, and also populates on the lead tracking sheet, which is a Google sheet. Um, again, 
Uh, that's kind of the first step. Step two is we always two step. Second step, then I like to step them into a phone call, right? Because inbound phone call leads are the best leads. Because again, it's a prospect actually picking up the phone. So on the thank you page, it's always usually a second offer, whether it's a free consultation or get a you know free water bottle or some you know take an additional ten percent off to drive them in. And then you could see it goes to the lead conversion process. That's going to be different for every business, but that lead conversion is gonna take them into a customer. And that is really how you turn clicks into customers, right? They're clicking on Facebook, they go through this, uh, this local uh, ads funnel and they become a customer. Um, the other bonuses, the other options, if you look at the bottom, is you got your email follow and your text message follow up. Those are all gonna be done to drive them into the conversion process, which again, that could be oh, completely over the phone. It could be, hey, come in for a free consultation or, come in for a free dinner, whatever that mechanism is, you know, it's those emails and texts are gonna drive them in that direction. So, so the action campaign. So the campaign structure that I like to use, um, and there's three levels. So that you got your campaign level, the ad set level, and your ad. And um, the way that we set up all of our initial campaigns is one campaign, one or two ad sets, and really one ad, and we do a dynamic creative test which is a newer feature in Facebook where Facebook will actually test your different creative elements. I'll show you how to create that. So once you're in your ads manager, and again, I wanna give you the over, overview for this. In my 60-minute um, social ads course, we have complete videos over the shoulder, step-by-step. Step. How do you set up your uh, profile correctly? How do you start, set up your fan page correctly? Um, how do you set up your business manager? What steps uh, you need to take so that your account doesn't get banned? All that's covered. But I just wanna show you the overview um, so that you could get the kind of the, the overview picture and go out and apply this if you have that stuff already set up. So uh, we always select lead generation um, that's on the campaign level. It's going to create a new campaign. Um, that's really the only setting we touch in the campaign level. So that's here. Then we go to the ad set level. In the ad set level, um, we name our ad set. Uh, I follow a very, very specific naming convention. So I will say, hey, P for prospect and campaign, dash DCT for dynamic creative test. And then I'll put in my targeting options as well as I always end it with a date. So I'll fill in the ad set name. And then I also put in, I click the instant forms. So we're going to let people submit a form to become a lead. Um, I have tried the automated chat that works well, and I've tried the call uh, with not much success, but I might be testing that out um, in the future again. So I always check instant forms. We then select the Facebook page that you want to promote. And then below that, you'll see this feature called dynamic creative. Uh, and you want to select that on. So that what that allows you to do is that allows you to uh, try different creative elements, different texts, different images, different headlines. And I usually like to try two of each, like two texts, uh, two different headlines, and two at least two different images. That way, um, you know, we, we start to see what works when Facebook puts this out, Instagram puts this out into the uh, marketplace for them to see. Um, setting the budget again, this is going to be different for every single client that you uh, you have. Usually though, I like to start off so anywhere between five to 20 bucks a day. Um, the start date, this is actually quite important. Um, the Facebook ad auction starts um, midnight the next day. So it recounts and they figure out all their available, available inventory and who's got the budget and the bid. So. Uh, what I like to do is I like to set that to go live for the next day, and I like to set it to go live at around 12.05, 12.04, around 1 a.m. So usually in the first two hours of the next day. So that gives Facebook's algorithm the best chance to allocate that budget throughout the day. Instead, if you do it at the end of the day, it's going to force that spend um, in. So that's a little pro tip there. Next we, next we go down to the audience. Um, as far as um, selecting the audience, uh, what we want to do is this custom audience stuff. Again, I, I'll cover I cover that in more detail inside the actual program. But for now, just so you guys can get something launched up, um, I like to do people living in or um, click here and do people living in this location. I will then select a radius around where the business is. You can type in the business location. 
You could type in the city. And essentially what I do is I will go into Google Maps and if it's a local business, I don't want them driving. Well, first of all, I'll ask them what is the area that they, that they usually get their clients from. If it's they have to go to the actual clinic, like it's a dentist, um, usually you don't want them driving more than 20, uh, 25 minutes. So I will figure out kind of how, how long that drive is and then make it whether it's, you know, if it's a really dense place, it could be 10 miles. Um, if it's really rural and there's highways, out in the middle of nowhere, it could be up to a 40, you know, 30 mile radius um, to run it. So this, you know, said Austin 20, um, knowing your age, that's going to come from the research we did, you know, for hair restoration, it's men over 30, right? Then the detailed targeting. So part of my method is trying to allow Facebook's algorithm to do the work. So the only time we use detailed targeting is right in the beginning. Uh, which is we want to steer the pixel. So we will select uh, targeting that is very specific. So like, you know, hair type interest for, um, and it might be a small audience, but I will always test that against broad. And what I mean by that is I will always test that against no targeting because oftentimes what's going to happen is Facebook's algorithm has gotten so good over the last past couple of years that the no targeting at all will actually work better because that algorithm is going to find where your customers are. So that's a big pro tip. If you're running campaigns that have been running for a little bit, if you switch it out to no targeting at all, you know, uh, oftentimes you'll watch your cost per lead drop. And again, this is something that I learned from one of my friends who they spend over $30 million per month on Facebook ads through their agency. And almost all of their campaigns are either lookalikes or no targeting. A majority of them are no targeting, letting the algorithm run. For placements, again, um, I do automatic placements. This is something that has changed in uh, really the last year. Uh, before, we used to do newsfeed only, mobile. However, um, like I cover inside um, my program, essentially, it's like Facebook is beating the manual user on where to place things. So if you're doing Facebook ads for two years, three years, two years ago, the user used to be able to beat them. It's kind of like um, Gary Kasparov versus Deep Blue. The human being was always able to beat the chess, uh, the chess computer up until when Deep Blue beat Gary Kasparov. And now obviously the computer can beat the best human chess players every single time. And that's kind of what's happening here. As the algorithm has got smarter in Facebook, um, the more you're willing to give control over to it, in the past couple of years, the better it's done to where now what we use is we just use automatic placements. Uh, again, here, we don't really touch anything. And those are really all the settings that we want to set at this ad set level. Now, in the ad level, this is where you're going to actually go and you're going to create your offer. So you're going to name your ad um, here, with dynamic creative you're able to select multiple images and essentially we're going to go down here to the text and just put in our text and our headline and again this is uh one of the niches that i was in cryo slimming and um it's like hey portland uh, here's what i got you know i'm doing up to two 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 twenty two hundred fifty dollars off cryo slimming in a free consultation uh, this then was, here's what it will do for you. Cryo slimming is a proven way to remove stubborn area and lose inches in only 28 minutes. Now, um, wouldn't use that today. Um, cause this against is a, you know, a claim. So this actually was, uh, one of the, one of our accounts here that, um, we learned some lessons on, right. Um, being a little aggressive here. So, uh, but I just wanted to show you, this was a screenshot that I had. Uh, headline and then of course the uh, description here was uh, 4.8 out of 5 stars Portland residents only this came from their Yelp reviews we just pulled that over and uh, that's pretty much it so you put in your uh, creative uh, after that then you're gonna then put select instant form and then you're gonna cl click create form in there you're gonna be able to build out the lead form like this just simply by following it you're gonna um, name the lead form and then it allows you to put in what you want here. So, and some text above it, pretty self-explanatory. And that is then how you create that. And simply after that, you're gonna click publish and go live. So that is how you then go out, uh, select the targeting features, select the Facebook ad, uh, create the lead form. Um, you know, if you built your own page and call sign, you're gonna redirect that to, uh, you know, your, your branded thank you page. 
And then obviously the optional stuff, uh, which I don't want to kind of bog you down with the technical details on a, on a live like this, but again, over the shoulder covered in detail in, uh, in my Facebook ads course, you know, we show you how to set up the automations with the email follow-ups, text message follow-ups, what software we use, how to build everything. And all this is recorded over the shoulder. Just want to do this quick. Cause again, don't want to bog you down on the live. Um, so that's pretty much how to create the ad. Once the ad is created, we then move into the next stage, stage, which is optimize and scale. So this is really how you read the numbers. So we have the pre-launch. The way that I think of it is there's three phases to running a campaign. You got the pre-launch. That's where we did the evaluate and intake. We did the market research and blueprint, and we did hitting the marketing bullseye. Step two then is the launch, which is what we just did. Now we're into phase three, which is post-launch, which is optimizing ads, optimizing the funnel, testing the process, and testing the lead conversion. So here right here, this is actually our, our NeoGraft account, which you can look inside of it there. And you can see um, different offers we are running, 297 a lead, 1114 a lead, 652 a lead, 906 a lead, 34 a lead, 13 a lead. So a couple things are gonna happen. You'll see we have had some turned off that are too high some turned off that didn't get uh, enough spend. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of look at our KPIs. And KPI stands for our key performance indicators. And um, CPM, uh, important metric, that's gonna stand for your cost per impressions. So what does it cost you to serve up a thousand impressions on the Facebook ad platform, Instagram ad platform? We're also gonna be looking at the cost per click, the click-through rate, the cost per lead, conversion rate, CPA and average order value. So when we look at this, essentially, uh, the most important metric out of all of this though, is gonna be money in, money out. And what we wanna do is we, for ourselves or for our clients, we wanna start with the sale and we wanna work backwards. So let's assume your client has $1,000 or let's say you have a $1,000 product to sell. Let's say you are selling uh, you know, done for you SEO service services. <coughs> so if you have a thousand dollars service and you want to get a two to one return on spend, that means that you could spend no more than $500 to acquire a customer. So that means, um, thousand dollars divided by two. If you want to get two to one, it's 500 bucks. So if you convert 10% of your inquiries, people that fill out a form on your website or people that inquire about your services. That means that your max CPL, which is your cost per lead, would be $50. Meaning, if you spent $50 per lead and you got 10 leads, that would be $500. And if you converted one in 10 of those at $50 a lead, you would spend $500 to bring on a customer. That customer would spend $1,000 with your service, right? Or $1,000 per month, right? So that essentially is the math you want to figure out for yourself or for your client so you know your K KPI. So our key performance indicator would say, hey, if we're getting leads less than $50, keep the ad running. If they're close to 50 bucks, optimize. If they're way over $50, shut them off. So there's really three outcomes to when you run a campaign. Number one, and this happens about 10% of the time, it totally bombs. You know, the offer is wrong, something's off, and you get zero leads, zero sales. You know, you let it run for... 24, 48 hours, you let the algorithm work, and it's just zero, zero leads, zero sales. That means we go back to the drawing board. And in that case, we're going back to looking at the creative, what's the offer, and all that. Number two, it works exactly as planned or better, right? And this happens 20% of the time. And this essentially is you run it 48 hours, you check it, and uh, you know 72 hours, and it works, and now you're about scaling it. And then number three is somewhere between the first two scenarios, and this happens 70% of the time. And this is where we, you know, we let the algorithm run, we let the dynamic creative ads test, and we start to test out different audiences and different variations. So we test out audiences, we test out, um, you know, CBO versus uh, ABO, automatic uh, bid optimization versus CBO, and then we test out, you know, with interest, without interest, lookalike audience, all stuff like that different offers, right? So those are the three things. Now there's three kind of four rules that I have for managing Facebook campaigns. Number one is you want to think 
like a scientist. Number one, you are gathering valuable data, even if you don't make sales. So I always say this, it's the data, not the drama. For whatever reason, when people run ads, they get really emotional about the actual ads um, that they're spending money, right? And really what we wanna do is we wanna let the data make our decisions. And the way we do this is by understanding statistics. And it's a mistake I see a lot of uh, you know newbie entrepreneurs fall into, which is they don't understand statistics. Like they'll let, they'll do two phone calls and they'll be like, the leads are crap. Or they'll run an ad for less than is statistically relevant and they'll make a decision, right? At the end of the day, you should, number one, study statistics so you can understand this stuff and you can make more rational decisions. And number two is, I don't consider anything less than 500 clicks to be statistically relevant, 500 impressions at the bare minimum. That means Facebook has had enough time to show the ad or Instagram has had enough time. So that's kind of rule two is understanding statistics. And even for the conversion process, right? <clears throat> There's been many times where we've sent leads to a client, three, three leads come in and the client is all distraught, right? They're like, these leads stink. Uh, they, we didn't convert them. Listen, when it comes to phone calls, anything less than 30 phone calls is statistically irrelevant. Right. And this client in this particular case, you know, the next three leads came in, they closed two out of them and they went and went, you know what, these leads are great. So understand statistics, understand your numbers, uh, you know, 30 phone calls a minimum. I don't think the leads are bad until, you know, they you've ran 30 of them and they have that zero zero credit to be able to actually buy something. So that's rule number two. Rule number three is never shut off something that is working within KPI test against it. It's a big mistake. Anytime you shut something off, you are throwing the algorithm off, which is a big part of what makes this work is understanding how the Facebook algorithm works. Um, so you never want to shut anything off that's within KPI. And rule number four is you want to understand the, understand the algorithm, which is the algorithm needs at least 24 to 36 hours before we evaluate. So a lot of people will run an ad, it's not working in the first six hours and they freak out and turn it off. So again, it's something we don't want to do. Um, and that's pretty much it for how to manage this. So. Obviously I wanna keep this quick, but in the course, you know, I cover what do you do? How do you scale? What are the three different ways to scale? Uh, and then, you know, my process for looking at the numbers and then evaluating it and then making, you know, optimizing, turning off and all that. But this is this will give you a baseline so you get started on your own. Um, and then we're on the lead, lead nurture, right? Lead nurture, uh, really end of the day, and I'll make this quick, is every lead should be touched weekly by your email system. And you know you should set up autoresponders, follow up calls, and retargeting. Right? These are leads from advertising, so they are going to need a bit more work, and that is why it is important to have follow up. So Aweber, Get Response, Active Campaign, any of these softwares allow you to follow up automatically with these leads, drip on them, warn them up. I call this for every client we have, we build a, uh, an email follow up sequence. We call it the lead oven, so that. A lead comes in, we get their email address, and they're getting automatic emails, automatic texts, automatic voice broadcasts to push them through the next spot, which makes our client's life a lot easier. And that's pretty much it. So that's the social media uh, local ads funnel. That's how you go out and build it, uh, covered everything. How do you write it? And then the last step, obviously, is to turn this skill into a business. And once you have this skill, number one, uh, you know, you could basically, for virtually any business, you could find customers on demand. Uh, and it allows you to create a repeatable process to automate the, the process of finding customers for your business. So you could use this. Um, one thing we'll talk about in a second is how we, Dan kind of gave me, uh, essentially, he said, hey, could you do this for other businesses? And one of the businesses that we did it for was Ashley's Swag Business. So uh, we'll cover that, how we did that. So that way, you know, you're not cold calling, you're not harassing, you know, you're going from that unwelcome uh you're, you're going from unwelcome pest to a welcome guest, right? Because they're coming to you. It's pull marketing, not push marketing, because they're coming at you, right? Um, so this is something that you would use for their business, creating an automated way for them to generate customers, and then not only that for your business, whether you're selling SEO, whether you're selling web design. And again, once you understand the skill set, this is something that you sell for a thousand, three thousand, even ten thousand dollars a month, and. Um, that is it. So <clears throat> we will uh, go back and um, let me know if you got it. Hey guys, so that is it. So 
Um, that right there wraps up the three-part pre-selling training that I did with Dan, which showed you exactly how I'm able to go out, take someone from cold to sold, not knowing me, sending out the email, having them watch the education-based marketing video, and then turning them into a sale. Now, um, like I said in the beginning, there's nothing for sale, but occasionally um, you people want my help doing this. And occasionally uh, inside of the JK program, I open it up for uh, which is very small classes of 24 people. It's called, you might've heard of it, it's called Force 42. And in that it's a six week program where I work with you and it's not like there's 5,000, 7,000 people. It's not even done on a Facebook Live. It's done through Zoom. So that way we all get on, we show our cameras and I walk a group of 24 people through that process and the results have been pretty amazing. If you go through the group, search Force 42 or look at any of my posts, you'll see that I've been able to take people that have, have been in JK for you know sometimes three years without any results and then this model right here, we apply it to them and they're making their first sale for $2,500 a month, first sale for $5,000 a month and pre-selling lead gen. So they're not going out there. They're not, uh, you know, building a hundred, like building all these sites and hoping to find a buyer, you know, spending their own money to, to rank it out. My method is very different. I like to find my buyer first, get their money in the door, take 50% of that as my profit, 50% of that I'm gonna use for social media ads to get them results right away, and the other 50% I'm gonna build a lead gen that I control. And that pretty much is the model that I recommend um, because it allows you to spend 80% of your time going out there and actually bringing in money. So uh, like my mentor told me, um, rich people get paid first, poor people get paid last. So I like to get paid before I do any of the work collect the money up front and then do the work. Find your buyer first. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, if this is something that you would like uh, more of my help on, if you'd like to hear uh, more recorded phone calls during the first uh, during the first $500,000 that I collected in, in my agency when I was personally doing the, the majority of the sales calls, I recorded every single phone call. Um, so inside this group, I give you access to more of those phone calls as well. Um, it's more in-depth training on every part of the process. So like I said, there's three parts of the process. There's the you know, generating a lead, making a sale, and delivering a service. So generating a lead, that is um, covered more in-depth in, in a program called Cold to Sold. Uh, when you, if you join Force 42, you get access to that. Uh, the next is how do you make a sale, right? That is my help-based selling system, and that is taught live during the Force 42 six-week bootcamp or three-day uh, weekend Zoom workshop, right? So you get access to that as well, uh, where we teach you, you know, I walk you and break you through kind of the the mindsets and the mechanics behind how do you make these three grand to five grand sales. Uh, and then give you help as well as on objection handling and all that good stuff. Uh, the final thing is delivering the service. So there's a full, uh, I think it's a very, very long, very in-depth uh, program that I created called 60 Minute Social Ads. And uh, you just watch the, the, the high, you know, the overview of that. Many of you will be able to take that and run with it. But if you want like, point and click, follow my mouse kind of stuff, real, real over the shoulder uh, with some more fundamental uh, theory b behind it uh, to, to become one of, you know, to do that really, really well, uh, run social media ads, um, you get access to that as well. So that's kind of the three components. And then as well as um, my personal mentoring and coaching around the mindset, around taking action and all that good stuff that you need to, to be successful. So um, if you're interested in uh, Force 42, like I said, we, we only open it up. Uh, it's very small. We sold out. Uh, we've done four classes um, at the time that I'm recording this. Uh, we've sold out in less than a week every single time we've opened this to the group because, again, there's 8,000 people inside this group. Uh, we sold it out every single time. So if you're, But if you're interested in doing something, uh, working with me uh, and doing this, uh, what I'd recommend you do is go have a look through the Facebook group. See if there's any current classes open. If there's not, uh, see if there's any posts where you could type in wait list because uh, we'll reach out to those people first when we do open. And um, um, yeah, so comment on one of those posts. Uh, if you can't find any of those posts, uh, find me on, uh, on Facebook and send me a PM uh, that you're interested in Force 42 and we could take it from there. So that said, I really enjoyed making that training for you um, and I wish you the best of luck.